What's up y'all? Thanks for clicking on another video. My name is Philosopher and today I'm going to be bringing you my Jun Sacrifice deck. Um, there are some things I changed to some of the other popular um, deck lists. It still has the same core as all the other Jun Sacrifice or Rakdos Sacrifice decks that you've seen. Um, but there's a little bit of a twist on it here. I think this is the most fun one to play. Um, I'm going to go through the full deck list real quick and then I'm going to talk about some of the interactions with some of the cards. So we have four copies of Cauldron Familiar. We have three uh, Claim the Firstborns. We have two Gilded Goose, four Witches Oven, four Blood Artists, two Croxa, Titan of Death's Hunger, uh, four Woe Striders, three copies of Gadrak, the Crown Scourge, four Mayhem Devils, four Collected Companies, and four Bolus's Citadels. We play 22 lands. Um, if I could, I would run another Phyrexian Tower, at least one, um, and then I would also run a full playset of Fable Passage, as well as the lands that come in untapped instead of the temples, but I mean, you gotta play with what you have, right? And I don't have the wild cards for all those. So um, that's the deck list. I'm gonna go through some of the key pieces, um, things that I added, things that I took out, um, stuff like that. So the main core of the deck is you wanna be playing creatures, you wanna be sacrificing creatures or having creatures die, and then that will hurt our opponent I, through things like Cauldron Familiar, um, Blood Artist, or Mayhem Devil, which basically say um, for various things happening that the opponent loses a life or you get to deal a damage. Um, we have Sack Outlets in Woe Strider, which allows us to sack at any time. We have uh, the Witch's Ovens that allow us to sack. We also have the Phyrexian Towers, which allow us to sacrifice a creature. Um, those are the main ways that we'll win is through just having creatures having creatures die or sacrificing them and then dealing a lot of damage to the opponent um we can also win through bolus's citadel bolus's citadel is a six cost artifact that says you may look at the top card of your library at any time you may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library if you cast a spell this way pay life equal to the cmc rather than paying its mana cost so if we have a mayhem devil on top we can pay three life instead of the three mana to play it which this allows us to go through our deck very very quickly and then it says, uh, tap this card, sacrifice 10 non-land permanents, each opponent loses 10 life. That's basically a game ender. If we get a Bolus of Citadel down and you play a lot of um, cheap creatures, you play out your Cauldron Familiars or your Blood Artists, your Mayhem Devils, um, basically anytime some of our things die, we gain life, they lose life, it allows us to keep playing things off the top, and it basically snowballs from there. Um, now... Some interesting cards in here, um, like Claim the Firstborn is a really nice one. You gain control of target creature with CMC 3 or less until end of turn, untap it and it gains haste. So this is really good in stealing things like um, like a Johnny's Pride Mates or um, you know things that are issues for you early on. You can take it, you can swing with it, and then you can hopefully sacrifice it with something like Witch's Oven or a Woe Strider um, as a little bit of control. And then uh, the main piece that I put in that is not like other decks that I've seen um, is Gadrak the Crown Scourge. So I'm going to read him and I'm going to talk about why I added him and why I took some things out. So Gadrak is a 3 cost legendary creature that's a 5-4. It has flying and it cannot attack unless you control 4 or more artifacts. It's not impossible to get it to attack but it is kind of difficult and it says which this part's important at the beginning of your end step create a creature token or sorry a treasure token for each non-token creature that died this turn so the reason i put in gadrak is because i was running this deck with a different deck list where it had like four lana war elves it had no cauldron familiars no witches oven and it had like four uh lana war elves it had four gilded goose it had um like dryad of the elysian grove and it had um priest of the forgotten gods Priest of the Forgotten Gods for me, I think is a little bit too slow. And um, Gadrak for me, it it helps our mana a lot more. Basically, we wanna be playing Bolus of Citadel as early as possible. And if you have a Gadrak, a Cauldron Familiar, and a Witch's Oven, um, this allows you to get a lot of treasure tokens. And that allows us to play Bolus of Citadel much earlier. And then if you have something like a Mayhem Devil, well, the treasure tokens say to add the mana, you have to sacrifice it. Mayhem Devil reads, if you sacrifice a permanent, it deals one damage to any target. So just for getting our mana, okay, from the treasure tokens, Mayhem Devil pings them for a damage. Just for doing our Cauldron Familiar and our Witches Oven combo, we get extra mana for next turn. That is, to me, it's a very, very big payoff. And I think it's one of the 
more slept on cards in uh, these colors. I've been trying to put Gadrak in a deck for forever and I couldn't find a place for him that would work. Um, but I think this is the perfect place. We have tons of things dying, gets us a lot of treasure tokens. Sacking the treasure tokens helps us out a ton with the Mayhem Devil, like I said. So I think that card is incredibly slept on. That's why I named it Gadrak Citadel. It's no longer Bolas Citadel. No one cares about Bolas. We care about Gadrak. Um, the rest of the deck, like I said, is all pretty much the same Rakdos, Jund stuff where you sack things with the Woe Strider, you, your Blood Irish triggers, yada, 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 all that stuff. Um, and then we do run the Collected Company because I think that that's a fun card. I love Collected Company. It's a nice way to cheat out creatures. Um, but yeah, that's the deck. As you'll see, there are some pretty nice gameplay um, in the next couple games. Uh, and I did record all of those uh, live because I do stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash philosopher. So if you're interested in seeing me play this deck live, go check me out there. Um, and then also I'm going to be doing a giveaway at 50 subs on this channel. We're at 33. The last video y'all killed it in the support. I can't thank you enough. Um, I want to do a Zenicar rising pack giveaway at 50 subs. So Please consider um, subscribing to the channel. Please like the video, leave a comment. Um, leave a comment with other decks that you'd like to see. I think the next video coming out is gonna be mono white aggro. Um, but yeah, I mean, I appreciate all the support on the channel and uh, I really hope y'all enjoy the video and uh, I'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks. Okay, game one versus Gaydor, King of Mordor. All right, Gator, what do you got for us? Um, this is not a good hand because two Witches Oven. Witches Oven is really nice, but we need creatures to sack to it. Croxa obviously won't stay on the battlefield because we have to instantly sacrifice him unless he escaped. So that will be a mulligan. Um, that's pretty good, actually. We will take this hand, and I think we're going to drop a... Mm. Claim is good if we're in the mirror, like not mirror, but if we're in a aggro matchup, we can steal their best creature and on turn three can sacrifice it to Woe Strider. Well, turn four, really. Blood Artist, good as well. I don't think we drop a land. I think we drop Bullets of Citadel, actually. Even though that, even though this, uh, like Bullets of Citadel is tons of fun to play with. Okay, let's drop this tapped because we don't need to play it yet name is godlike i don't trust the teferi avatar and i do not trust these sleeves i like these sleeves but i just don't trust what they're doing okay of course uh our first match is against goblins i absolutely hate the goblin matchup um Okay, so all these things come in untapped because that does count as a mountain and a forest. So it doesn't matter what we play. Let's get Blood Artist on. Okay, so they we know we have the we know that they have a Cranko in hand. Luckily, there's no Skirk Prospector. That is good. Okay, never mind. There's a Skirk Prospector. You dueled this guy. We'll let the two damage go through. Mmm, Gadrak's really nice. Um, I think next turn we'll play the Woe Strider and claim the Firstborn. I'm hoping... I'm hoping that they play the Cranko so that I can take the Cranko next turn. Let's do... We drop Gadrak. Because Gadrak can't attack, so... Gadrak's an interesting inclusion in this deck, but I think he's really good. It can't attack unless you control four or more artifacts, but it can block. So it's a 5-4 blocker for three mana, which is good. And then if I have something die during my turn, I create a treasure token for each non-token creature that died this turn. So that's mana ramp. Just for me sacrificing things like I want to. Okay, so they're one off of playing um, Muxus. And another Muxus off the top. Dang, that sucks. Um... What do we take? We don't do anything with Claim the Firstborn, actually. Um, we might just try to get as much 
like or as many creatures on the board as possible so drop the dragon skull play woe strider and cauldron familiar i mean no let me i'm gonna claim the first born on the skirt prospector that's what i'll do so i do need to play this that was almost a really bad misplay because if I claim the firstborn on their Skirk Prospector, then they can't active they can't sacrifice their goblins for mana, which means that they're way they're still two lands off of Muxus. And we know that they don't have a land on the top. So they're stuck at at least five. Um So then let me I'll just sack him right now. Thank you. <laughs> they gave me a nice. Appreciate it. Yeah, collected company is really good. Um, we're not going to attack because Gadrak can't yet. See, like, so since we sacrifice something, we get that treasure token. And that puts us a little bit higher in the mana. Interesting. They burn for Krenko. I wouldn't have been able to claim the firstborn on Krenko anyways, because it's a four. It is going to be my turn. Uh, we can do... Let's start with the Collected Company. Yeah, let's start with the Collected Company. Ooh. Okay. If we play a Croxa, they have to get rid of... No, let's do this. Because they would have to discard one thing in their hand, but they don't have a land. They don't hit a land there. Okay, let's, let's do Mayhem Devil. And we're actually going to do Goose because it gives us an artifact that we can use. Um, so whenever we play the Cauldron Familiar, because we're sacrificing this for black mana, it does count as us sacrificing something, so we'll get to kill one of their creatures. Actually, let's do this. We sacrifice Goose and... Let's kill Krenko. We can't have Krenko stay on the board. Um, we're gonna sacrifice Cauldron Familiar. To kill Krenko. Oops, sorry, that's the Blood Eyes trigger. Snowberry, thank you for the tier one sub. Ten months. Thank you so much. It's crazy that we've almost been streaming for ten months. And then we're gonna play the Cauldron Familiar by sacrificing a food. Yep. And then because we sacrifice another permanent, we get to kill the Krenko. And then we'll ping them for the one damage. Nice, thank you. Um, we will play the temple just to scry because we know that there was a land on top. We don't want that. Um, and then we're going to pass the turn because I need my Woe Strider. So we had two things die, so we get two treasure tokens, which is really nice. Okay, they play the War Chief. Echo Genius also with this uh, with the Prime sub, nine months. Thank you. Um. Okay, we let it go to my turn, which is ooh, witches oven is so nice. Okay, so we're going to witches oven, the cauldron familiar, which is going to create a food. We hit him with blood artist. We get a mayhem double trigger, and then we get to play the cauldron familiar by sacrificing a food. And we're going to do the one damage to their war chief because I really don't want that to stay on the field. Now the cat's back. Um, we could... Let's create a food. And then let's sack the food. Ooh. Rookie is with a 25-bit cheer. Thank you. Those are loud. I need to turn those down. We're going to sacrifice this. Do one damage there. Um, let's sacrifice, yeah, let's sacrifice the cat. We actually could have got more by keeping the food. I'm just trying to make sure that they have no creatures. I know it's a little bit grindy, but, uh, making sure that they have no creatures is kind of the goal right now. Okay, we can attack for free with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now the question is, can we do six damage? If we Woe Strider, yeah, we can. Okay, so we can actually kill them this turn. 
So one damage, one damage. Fine, we keep it on top. We sack the Woe Strider for Gilded Goose. And then we go one damage, one damage. Leave it. And then we'll just sack our two treasure tokens to get the Mayhem Devil <laughs> triggers. Just to show like all the ways that we can sacrifice things. And we actually beat Mono Red Goblins in game one. Usually that's a very, very difficult matchup. I should have attacked with Gad first. Nah. I didn't I I don't think I had the artifacts to attack with Gadric. I think I think Gadrak is is so nice. Okay, on to game two. Zach 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 Zachna Tiradra? Tiradra? I don't know how the hell to say that. Okay, um this is a very good hand. Basically, all of our things that ping whenever things die. And a bolus of Citadel. And, which, like, I showed you the way that the that the food and the treasures um, counted for Mayhem Devil because it's whenever they sacrifice a permanent. Fable Passage says take, sacrifice Fable Passage. So we do get that as well. Those two are always stuck together. I hate that about bolus of Citadel. If you get one, like, if you have one in hand, you're almost guaranteed to draw the second. Okay, so we are playing mono black aggro, it looks like. Another gutter bones. Okay, it could be worse because we could have had a... Uh, what's that knight called? I forget. Um, I'm hoping that I hit a land that comes in untapped next. Because otherwise we're in really bad shape. Archfiend's Vessel is always scary. Because if it enters from the graveyard... Then they create a 5-5 five, five demon. Oh, that's even worse. Um, well, we can't lose Blood Artist. We might have been just a little bit too slow. I am going to have to shock myself for this. Yeah. Do we Woe Strider? I think we Woe Strider just to get a blocker. Okay, we're alive next turn with what's on the field. Ooh, Cabal Stronghold. That's going to be a lot of mana. Uh, not right now. It taps for the same amount. I, I think of Cabal Coffers, but like that's not legal. And it's not even in the game. Okay. Let's see what they do. The ideal is that they just attack with Archfiend's Vessel because they don't want to lose their Gutter Bones. Although they should attack with everything, because I'm not gonna want to lose my wolf trader. No. Um. Okay, so they're exiling Wo Strider. If I, that's eight damage. I can go down to two with Wo Strider. Oh no, I can't. I think I need that thing to block, because I can't sacrifice itself, right? I can't. Uh, we just let it resolve. I would love to get the scry, which is what I was trying to do. But if I get rid of my goat, then I'm just dead on board. I would I would have one health. Just block like that. Okay, gain a life. This does come well. Let's go. So Mayhem Devil. We Fabled Passage. Their Gutter Bones. That will gain us a life. I think, I mean, we're dead though. Yeah, unfortunately, we're dead. Just with what's on the board. Because I have a four flyer. Unlucky. I mean, all they need to do is attack. I was not anticipating the Demonic Embrace. It's a very good card in, in stuff like this. Yep. Yeah, GG's. Okay, unfortunately we lose game two to a very quick mono black aggro. Let's see if we can bounce back for game three. All right, game three and we're up against Uri Dimu. There's some weird ass names in here. I mean, so is mine. 
currently. Uh, I like this. I like this hand a lot. Um, unfortunately, the temple comes in tapped, and I... I actually don't think we need to play Witch's Oven right off the bat, because we don't have anything to sack with it. But yeah, we definitely need to play our Scryland right now. Let's see what we get. Uh, Collected Company is really good. I think we keep. It's going to be a little bit greedy because we're not really doing anything. When I say a little bit greedy, I mean it's going to be a lot of bit greedy. But they are playing Simic, so hopefully they're just playing Ramp. I say hopefully they're playing Ramp as if that deck's easy to beat. Because here they, here they are on turn 2 with 4 lands. Suck my ass. Um, do I want Blood Artist out? I think I just want Temple again to make sure we hit something that we need. I don't think Blood Artist is that important at the moment. Uh, yeah, Mayhem Devil is really good. Keep that too. Oh, I could have played Witch's Oven. I meant to. Oh, GG's. We're fucked. Uh, remember, kids, this is a turn three Nisa who shakes the world. Turn three. Literally, the game is just, like, impossible at that point, almost. Um, now, hopefully, the good thing is that they're not drawing into anything. So if we... I'm trying to think. Is there anything... I could put Gadrak. He can block. It's not really the play we want. But I think it would prevent them from attacking with their forests at least. We might have been a bit greedy keeping these. Remember remember when I said that they didn't have card draw? And they're probably going to drop an Ugin because of course they drew Ugin. Okay, they picked a... Okay, they're just playing Arboreal Grazer Tribal. Okay, see, they didn't attack there. Which is interesting. Um, I could play Phyrexian Tower and get two black mana if I were to sack something. No, I don't think I do. I think I'm going to do Mayhem Devil into Fabled Passage just to ping this for one. Or do I just go Collected Company? I think I might just go collect a company. I think that's the fastest way to get back into this game. So let's get a... We'll get a swamp with that because I think black man is the most important. Let's collect a company. Let's see if we hit anything. That's pretty good. That's very good. Um, we'll pass the turn. The Mayhem, the Fabled, and the Oven, I don't think it would have done... I mean, like, yeah, it would have done some damage, but... I think if I play Mayhem now... I think we'll be a little bit better off. Okay. I think we play Tower... To get black mana just to load the board up with as much stuff as possible yeah because if, if we do Frexian tower and we sack like unfortunately Gadrak only cares about non tokens which kind of sucks um we'll go like this tap this for two black we'll sack this I'll do one damage there. We do need to ping the Nisa a little bit just to keep her off of the ult. And now, do we want another Woe Strider? No, I think we want Blood Artist and Witch's Oven. Let's go like that. Okay. Pass the turn.
Okay, they are scrying, but at least they're not drawing. Okay, what, whatever they got on top of their library, they like. That's kind of scary. Hmm, not what we wanted. And we play like this. Play this tapped. I think we can sack of sack the creature in their Nisa. We'll get double blood artist triggers here. I'm at 16. I think we'll do this at their end step. Um, I can't attack yet. How many does it need? Four or more. We only have two. Um, yeah, I think we just pass. So they probably like top decked an Ugin. Maybe a Hydro Crisis. Okay, whatever they're doing, they're trying to get the most mana possible. It seems like. Imagine a board wipe, board wipe right now. Back a woe for Gadrak trigger and can escape. No, I need four other cards. I don't have them right now. Oh yeah, that doesn't tap for two green because it's not technically a forest. This has to be a Hydro Crisis, right? Which means that we lose, basically. Yeah. So they're going to gain five life and draw five cards. Which really sucks because now there's no way that they don't hit what they need. Just eat this real quick and like pink the... Well, I guess we need to start doing life now, huh? Because we literally win next turn or we don't win at all, so. Um, I'm going to set thing in my upkeep. I'm probably going to sack one Woeshire to the other one. Okay. So let's do this. Just to see if, like, we need to hit... Honestly, if we hit, if we hit a Bolus of Citadel, we're actually... Pretty well off. Please. <gasps> okay, we might just do it. We might just do it. That will go to our main. Okay. So we play Bolus of Citadel. Wait. Why is it tapping things like that? I don't need it to tap like that. Black. Black. Oh, I do. I don't have three sources of black. Damn. I actually have to sacrifice something. Um, What do I sacrifice? Do I sacrifice Gadrak? I think I do. Because the other one's all ping for damage. I can't lose them, and this gives me my free sack outlet. So let's do... And he's not going to be able to attack anyways because I get the treasures on my instep. Yeah. So a sack Gadrak for double black there 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 so we're just going for life at this point and then that's three and let's go one doesn't matter two three yep we play bolus of citadel not a land on top collective company yes yes okay hold on we we're gonna play that we're gonna play the croxa because tech that's a sacrifice immediately i don't like i said croxa doesn't really i mean uh gadrak doesn't really matter I think we we might win this. Yeah, it sacrifices. So we get the death trigger twice for Blood Artist. And the Mayhem Devil. Um, we can Witch's Oven, the Cauldron Familiar. Yeah, we win. We definitely have the damage, especially with Goose. So watch, we can play Goose off the top. We can play the Cauldron Familiar by sacrificing a food. That's going to be one damage there. Cat comes back. 
we play the witch's oven and then we're gonna witch's oven the cauldron familiar and that's three damage that's a ggs my friend <laughs> yes oh beating simic ramp feels so good hell yeah top deck of the year it definitely was top deck of the year i mean i had the scry but yeah definitely look at all that we're gonna be in bad shape after that <laughs> hell yeah Thank you.